Welcome to Bio150 Lab. Design your own DNA barcoding adventure. The goal of this lab is to be a year-long course-based DNA barcoding research experience. Um, this is combining the 140 and 150 lab. In the first semester, Bio140, it's basically an introduction to DNA barcoding where we teach you the tools and the theory involved with DNA barcoding. Whereas in this lab, Bio150, the second semester in the year-long series, we want you to use those tools that we taught you to design your own DNA barcoding research project and practice actual science. The goals of the Bio150 lab are as follows. To experience the process of science firsthand and to make new discoveries. We want you to practice scientific communication. We'll put a lot of emphasis on scientific writing in this course. We want you to work in teams and practice teamwork and collaboration. So many of the activities in this lab will be group based. And we also want to deepen your understanding of the techniques and concepts that were introduced in Bio 140 Lab. So we'll build upon some of those techniques that you learned before. This is a timeline of the DNA barcoding lab. Um, and basically the main goal here once again is to have you develop, execute, and share your own DNA barcoding research project. So we'll spend the first couple of weeks developing a research question and working as a group to develop a formal scientific proposal for your project. Once you've written up your proposal, then we'll collect samples. So you'll have about four per group. We'll extract DNA from those samples, PCR amplify them, and barcode them. And then we'll analyze those samples uh, using DNA Subway. Lastly, your group will write up your results. And finally, you'll write up a discussion and abstract. So a couple key aspects to take home from this timeline. Number one, this lab does not correlate with the lecture. So the lecture and the lab are designed to be separate activities. Number two, parts of this lab will be identical to 140 lab with some key additions that will build upon 140 lab in this 150 lab. Um, but the DNA barcoding workflow is more or less the same. You're going to be collecting samples, extracting uh, DNA from those samples, PCR amplifying, running a gel electrophoresis, sequencing the DNA from the samples that amplify correctly, and analyzing those samples using similar analyses to those you did in Bio 140. Um, a couple other cons key considerations is this is meant to be a semester-long research project. Um, and so that being said, it's going to be very important for you to be patient and use your time wisely in the beginning weeks to develop a research project that you're really interested in because that's the project that you're going to be working on for the rest of the semester. Um, another key consideration is you'll be collecting your samples during weeks three through five of the lab, um, about four samples per team. So you want to make sure whatever project you come up with uh, you're able to actually collect the samples for that. So don't plan to collect something that's not going to be available in the middle of the winter. Um, and lastly, you'll notice that many of the parts of this uh, lab are group assignments. So collecting samples, writing up your results, writing your project proposal. But in the end, there's a discussion abstract that are due, one per an individual. And there'll be several other individual assignments interspersed throughout the semester. Um, so it's very important that you as an individual are accountable and contribute to your team. Otherwise, that may come back to bite you when you have to write up your final discussion for your research project. So how to navigate this lab. Canvas is going to be the one-stop shop for everything related to this lab. So you'll have a course Canvas page, and this is the home page for your Canvas page. If you scroll down on this home page, you'll see a breakdown of what's happening in lab each individual week. So for example, in week two of lab, and you'll have a date set there, you'll have the lab title, so you'll be vetting your barcoding questions, and you'll have uh, intro in introduction form and function, and you'll have the main deliverables for that lab. So for example, in week two, you'll form groups and precisely divine your group's DNA barcoding question. If you scroll further down on this page, you'll also see a lot of other important information. So I invite you to take a look at the Canvas homepage and make sure you explore that home page. Um, other important information that will be on this home page is, of course, your instructor's name, their contact information, your section number, and their email address. I would definitely recommend contacting them typically through their email address. There's also their office space, 
and their office hours when they'll be available, and also a Zoom link for their online office hours. Other key aspects of navigating this lab through Canvas, um, oftentimes in Canvas you'll see a to-do list on the right side of the home page. That to-do list will have a list of upcoming assignments with their associated points and the dates and deadlines for those individual assignments. So those may not correlate exactly with what you're seeing right here. Just know that those assignments are available and also know that many of these assignments will have what are called prerequisites. So some assignments you won't be able to complete until you've worked through other previous assignments. So make sure you're paying close attention to the prerequisites for any individual assignment if you're not able to get access to it initially. The other main aspect of navigating this lab, or one of the other main spots to check out when you're navigating this lab on the Canvas page is the modules. So this little spot here, if you click this on your Canvas page, this will take you to modules. This will open up a page of many, many different modules. There's about 13 or 14 different modules that will work through each week for this lab. So here's just an example of one module. So this is module number one with several different activities that are listed underneath it. And so this is how most of the course is organized by these modules. So please check out this modules page. A couple things to note on this. Um, for each lab, there's typically a list of pre-lab activities within the module, and there'll be a README. This is the lab manual for each week. So each week, you're probably going to open this up, download it, print it out, and make sure you bring a printed copy to lab. Another important aspect, um, if you look in the modules, you'll also be able to find individual assignments, their point values, and their due dates. And you'll be able to click on those and find more details regarding the dates, deadlines, and points. So please make sure you take close attention to that as well. Please check announcements regularly. Um, so if you click on the announcements tab in Canvas, that will take you to the individual announcements. Um, it's your job to check on these regularly. This will be the main mode of communication between the instructor and you. Um, please do not show up to lab saying you didn't see the announcement or you haven't checked the announcement. I will repeat, this is your responsibility to check these out on a regular basis and know uh, what your instructor is trying to communicate to you. Required materials for the lab. Um, you'll need a face mask, closed-toed shoes. You'll need access to the internet, a computer, Google Docs, and a printer outside of class so that you can print the labs each week. It's recommended that you have a three-ring binder or folder. Um, just to organize the paperwork that's printed out each week, a smartphone, a calculator, a USB flash drive, and a laptop are highly recommended. Um, there is no required lab manual for the lab, but you should read and print labs out each week. Um, with that in mind, the lab attendance policies are as follows. If you're greater than 20 minutes late for lab, that is considered an absence. The first unexcused lab absence will result in a zero for any items that are due that day. A second unexcused absence will result in a 10% deduction from your overall semester lab grade. And three unexcused absences will result in a zero for the semester lab grade. So if you have three unexcused absences, you will fail this course. So please make sure you attend regularly and show up on time. In terms of lab makeups, you are able to make up lab in some circumstances, but it must be a legitimate and verifiable excuse, and you must let your instructor know well in advance whenever possible. For 150 lab grades, this is the breakdown. 5% of your grade will come from your group lab notebook that you'll make entries for each week. 15% of your grade will come from individual quizzes, post labs, and activities that happen during, pre, before, and after labs. 15% of your grade will come from your group project proposal. 15% will come from your project results. 20% will come from your individual project description and abstract. 5% from your midterm exam. And 25% from your individual final exam for a total of 100% of your grade. Um, with the caveat that these breakdowns are subject to change, specific assignments and due dates will all be posted on Canvas, so please take very close attention to those. Um, and please make note of which assignments here are group versus individual assignments, and that many of the high point or high percentage assignments are individual assignments to keep everyone in your group accountable. 
So all of that being said, um, there is a detailed syllabus and detailed list of policies um, in the syllabus on Canvas. So you can click on that syllabus tab and see all of this information broken down. And just remember that the Canvas page is at canvas.jmu.edu and you can also download the app too. If you have any questions about the course syllabus, please reach out to your instructor to ask. So we need to talk quickly or you need to very quickly uh, work through a lab safety quiz. Um, all students must complete this lab safety quiz and the link can be found in Canvas under module 1.2. So if you click on the modules tab, you should find module 1.2 that says lab safety form and survey. Please click on this lab safety form, a quiz will pop up and please complete that quiz. The next major activity for you to complete is this working in teams personality quiz. So this is a brief about 20 minute activity that's located under module one. What we're asking you to do is to take the true colors personality quiz located under module one in Canvas and then use the descriptions uh, in this PDF to learn about your own personality color or colors. Um, I say colors because if two are close you can describe both of them and then fill out this week one discussion personality color that's once again located under module one. So please complete that activity now. And remember that the point of this activity is to see uh, what aspects of your personality can help you contribute to group work this semester. So the next activity is a very quick reintroduction to the process of science. And this is a recap of something we learned about in the Bio 140 lab. So recall that science is our knowledge of the natural wor world and the process through which that knowledge is built. So when we talk about our knowledge of the natural world, we often think of science as the facts we learn about in a textbook. So a fact might be something like the structure of DNA, and we often take it for granted that we just understand that DNA is a double helix. But you also have to uh, understand that those facts that we generate about the natural world were developed through this process of science, this process by which those facts were created. For example, the Watson, Crick, and Franklin experiments that allowed us to discover what the structure of DNA was. And those experiments took many, many years to arrive at that structure. Now, science as itself has some key characteristics. And note that not all of these characteristics need to be met for something to be counted as science. But typically, if it meets many of these criteria, it counts as science, whereas it focuses on the natural world, it aims to explain the natural world, it uses testable ideas, it relies on evidence, it involves a scientific community, and typically leads to ongoing research and more questions being generated. So when we talk about this process of building scientific knowledge, you might ask yourself, how do we go about doing this? And sometimes it's thought that maybe you just magically arrive at conclusions like the structure of DNA. But typically, that's not how scientific discoveries work. It's not a eureka process, but it's more of a long involved process that relies on testing ideas with evidence gathered from the natural world. And this process is often described as the scientific method. And you may remember or recall this from high school or um, other science courses where in the scientific method you ask a question, you formulate a hypothesis, perform an experiment, collect data, and draw conclusions based on those data um, to see whether or not uh, your experiment or your data support your hypothesis or not. And it's not to say that this scientific method is not correct. Um, the problem is the scientific method that you're probably more familiar with is really just a huge oversimplification of the actual real life process of scientific discovery. And we want to reorient you, orient you to this figure, this process of science figure of how real science works or this process of science flowchart that consists of four sort of main areas. This red area, which is exploration and discovery, this purple area, which is community analysis and feedback, this blue area that's benefits and outcomes, and this green area that's really at the center of the process of science that's testing ideas. And this is sort of where that scientific method part lives. So let's explore this in a little bit more detail. 
So when we talk about exploration and discovery, so this is that red circle at the top of the process of science flowchart. This is the main router, the main entryway into the process of science. And so this can involve things like new technology, curiosity, a practical problem that needs to be solved, or perhaps a surprising observation of your own personal motivations that leads you to ask questions, um, start exploring the literature that's out there, making your own observations, and maybe sharing some initial data and ideas with others. And eventually, through this exploration and discovery process, you begin to come up with solid ideas and hypotheses to begin testing. And then you move into this testing portion of the process of science. It's really at the heart of the process of science. This is the scientific method. So this is where you're gathering data and interpreting those data to test specific hypotheses or ideas. So you have formal experiments and you're using facts to test um, different ideas that you have or formal hypotheses you have and see if they support a hypothesis, oppose a hypothesis, or perhaps revise new ideas. And so this, once again, is the core of the process of science where you're um, working through that scientific method and gathering data to test hypotheses. Um, once you've done enough experimentation and perhaps come up with some interesting data to test a hypothesis, you oftentimes move into this purple part of the scientific flowchart, which is community analysis and feedback. So you might publish a study or you might share some of your studies with your colleagues to get a discussion going and perhaps get some feedback or peer review from those uh, studies that you've done or some others might replicate your studies to see if they get the same results that you do. And this can create a little feedback within that community analysis and feedback where you're coming up, other people are coming up with new ideas and new questions and starting to build larger theories that your ideas and your data contribute to. And then the last part uh, of this sort of process of science is this blue circle over here that includes the benefits and outcomes. So this might be developing technology, um, this might be addressing societal issues, this might be informing policy or solving everyday problems, or simply just building new knowledge or satisfying curiosity. But the idea here is your results and your findings have particular benefits and outcomes that contribute uh, to society as a whole. And this is a very important aspect of the scientific process. So the point here is this was meant to be a sort of quick review of how science works and reminds you that this sort of simplified scientific method is an oversimplification of how the actual process of science works. And um, it's important that you understand that we don't expect you to memorize every single aspect of every little thing going into each of these different parts of this process of science flowchart. But you should know the general areas of the flow chart, so exploration, discovery, community analysis, feedback, benefits and outcomes, testing ideas. And you should also um, be able to place examples of particular activities into its correct area in the flow chart. And just as a hint, these types of questions may be on the final. And we'll give you some examples of those types of questions um, in a Canvas quiz that you'll see shortly. Okay. So getting back to the Bio 150 lab and designing your own DNA barcoding adventure. So quickly we want to review what is DNA barcoding. So let's watch this video real quick. This is our home. We live here. We share our home with millions of other species, most of whom we know nothing about. All these species are our neighbors and we're closely connected to them. The choices we make affect these species in many different ways. But if we don't know who our neighbors are, how can we expect to understand our impact on the planet's biodiversity? Using traditional methods, it's taken over 250 years to describe 1.7 million species. At this rate, it'll take at least 500 years to complete the list. Now, using new DNA-based tools, scientists are building a digital list of all living species on the planet. With these new techniques and help from people around the world, we can finish the list much sooner. Even you can help. Seriously, we can all make a difference. In Canada, the Biodiversity Institute of Ontario is home to IBOL, the International Barcode of Life Project. In collaboration with people and organizations from around the world, they've built a publicly searchable database of short, 
species-specific DNA sequences that functions like a barcode. Yes, a barcode, similar to the barcodes you find on your groceries, your books, and just about everything you buy. Just like these barcodes are unique to consumer products, DNA barcodes can be used to register and identify different species, even from larval forms or fragmentary remains. Here's how it works. DNA is extracted from any living organism. Its barcode is then amplified, sequenced, and submitted to the BOLD database, along with information about where and when the specimen was collected. So far, over 70,000 species have been barcoded, and with the help from students around the world, they've uncovered some startling things. High school students across North America discovered that 25% of fish sold in supermarkets was mislabeled, and in some cases, at-risk species were found in stores. Meanwhile, in an apartment in New York City, a new species of cockroach was found. And across Europe, students are beginning to barcode plants. To foster global collaboration, IBOL is building a social networking game called the Global Biodiversity Challenge. The game is designed to encourage students in schools to collaborate with scientists and participate in DNA barcoding. Using these genetic tools, students can make new discoveries and address important social issues. So join the challenge. Compete to discover something new, gain points for your findings, get published in the Bold database, become a citizen scientist, and most importantly, help all of us better understand our place alongside our neighbors in the web of life on Earth. So you won't be directly contributing to this uh, biodiversity challenge, um, but you will be coming up with your own DNA barcoding research project. So first, Please take a minute to just answer these questions. So the next activity is for you to explore and discover DNA barcoding to come up with your own research questions that you might like to address for your semester long research project. So DNA barcoding is a new technology that hopefully uh, cues some curiosity in you and has you asking questions, and you'll begin exploring some literature and hopefully find some inspiration for a DNA barcoding project of your own. So, what are you actually gonna do? Please open up Canvas and go into module one, and please read page two in the lab readme file exploring DNA barcoding, and please follow the directions in the activity on pages two or three of that lab manual. Once you've completed that activity, please complete this Canvas quiz web search results and submit that. Also, if while you're working on this activity, any questions come up, please reach out to your instructor via email um, or any other means that you can find um, to help address any questions that might come up during this activity. So before your next or first lab meeting, you should come up with a project idea. So you're gonna choose a topic for your semester long DNA barcoding project in our next lab meeting. So please come ready to pitch your favorite idea from that uh, web search result. So you're going to go into module one and work on these post lab discussion of your questions. So please complete this activity. Um, and also, once you've completed that activity, please keep an eye out for any feedback from your instructor. So you can reopen this assignment later and look for any assignment comments that your instructor might have regarding uh, the questions that you came up with. But please come ready to pitch your favorite idea in our next lab. So your homework that's due by the deadlines posted on Canvas. If you haven't already, please finish these assignments. So the Canvas web search results quiz, the personality color discussion posted on Canvas, the your questions discussion posted on Canvas, all of this under module one, the process of science quiz, and the lab safety quiz that's under module 1.2. Also, please print and read lab two that's under module two before coming to class and complete the week two pre-lab quiz on Canvas. And lastly, make sure you review any instructor feedback on your questions and come prepared to pitch your favorite project idea to the rest of class. Good luck.